It is time to declutter my tarot deck collection. I am sitting at my desk right now. You're going to hear my puppy in the background. She's playing. I'm going to show you my desk because it is a mess. So this is my desk area. And as you can see, my desk is kind of full. Um, I mean, the obvious here are these plushies that I have crocheted. They are so cute and adorable and i want to start my own little crochet shop and they cannot stay on my desk i want them up on my shelves but as you can see my shelves are full of pterodex <laughs> and i've got quite a few i'm pretty sure i have about 30 in my collection right now and i really want to decrease the amount of tarot decks that I have. I am not a collector. I don't need an entire collection. I've kind of been going through it, to be honest. Let me put you guys on the tripod. I've been watching a lot of shows and videos while crocheting. One of the shows that I have been watching is Hoarders. And you can see like the entire mounts and piles of stuff and the collections that they have that they have a very hard time getting rid of because they feel so emotionally connect connected and attached to those items. Hey Lucy. And I don't want to feel that way. I am not a hoarder. My house is not gross and full of collections. It is getting a little bit full. We do have quite a small house, but it has been making me feel very overwhelmed about my collection. With that comes that I, because of you guys, have hit 5,000 subscribers and I really want to do a giveaway. I already have some decks in Purgatory that I will probably be giving away. So I want to do a live stream and a giveaway so to celebrate 5k subscribers. I don't even really know how I want to do this video. I think the first thing that I want to do is grab the decks that I really, really love and do not want to separate with. Like my favorite decks that I love to use all the time. Ugh. The first one is my Dreaming Way Tarot. I absolutely love this tarot deck. Do I need to take the light down? I love my Dreaming Way Tarot. It feels very, or it looks very, very till whimsical-ish, but I love the energy of this deck. It is super direct. It is one of my favorite decks that is one of those that I can always read with. It's always a very clear reader, so that is why I absolutely love this deck. I also think I have to keep the Centennial Edition. I do really love it for like a neutral voice type of deck. Then another one of my favorites is the Cesare Bido Tarot. Do not want to part with this. I cannot believe that I have only had this for like a year. This is one of my favorites. It's modern. It has bright, bold colors, but not like too bright and bold. I love the imagery, love the artwork. I'm obsessed with this deck. I love it. Then of course, you guys know my obsession with the Lightseer's Tarot. I feel like I'm showing these decks, but you know what they look like. They're uh, <laughs> the Lightseer's Tarot. It is bright, it is bold, it is fun, it is modern. I love my Lightseer's Tarot. Those are some of my absolute favorites. And one of my newer favorites is the, ooh, This Might Hurt Tarot. This was sent for review. Lucy, this was sent to me for review by Liminal Eleven. And I just absolutely fell in love with this deck. It is modern, it is fun, it just, I don't know, it hits the spot. It is one of those decks that I can grab and do a good reading with. I love this for client readings as well. So the This Might Hurt Tarot is also one that I do not want to part with. I don't know why, I feel like it's easier to grab the decks that I'm like really obsessed with. Um, before I make some hard decisions. So I don't think I'm going to show the cards of all of these because it's just a little bit too much. I think I did that for my collection video, which pretty much all of these decks will be featured in. A new deck that I got that I don't want to part with it is the Fifth Spirit Tarot. It is super inclusive. It's really fun. I've used this a bunch for my political tarot readings and it is an amazing reader. Have had a lot of fun with that deck. Do not want to part with it. 
Um, you guys know this is the bag that in which I keep my good Karma Tarot. Uh, it is bright, it is bold, it is fun, it has yellow bags. My absolute favorite, like, I love it. I am not doing a good job of decluttering, but there are some decks that I know that I can probably let go of. A collection of decks that I want to keep are my three Season of the Witch Oracles. I have my Maven Oracle. I have the Beltane one. Everything you hear crashing is my dog. And I have the Imble one. I love these. I am going to get the Lisa and the Lemes ones. I might have... Pretty sure I'm going to get all of them. Pretty sure. Then I love my Tree Keepers Oracle. This has been so great. I did an entire review of this. I am obsessed with it. It is gorgeous. It is exactly what I want in an Oracle deck. And then also one that I recently got that I don't want to get rid of is my Mythos Tarot. Super pretty. I've been obsessed with it. So I want to keep that. Okay, so... There are definitely some more decks that I want to keep. This one I've taught, and these are decks that you have heard me talk about that I really love to read with. The Intuitive Night Goddess Tarot is one that knows me super well. It's very a very personal deck for me. I only use it for readings for myself. And I am obsessed uh, with this one, the Afro Avatar Tarot. It is one that is no longer available, and I love the Avatar show. This is what this is my first indie deck that I got, and I love it. Let's see, is there another deck that I am obsessed with that I love? My Anna K Tarot, you guys. I have talked about this a bunch as well. This is def this definitely has a place in my collection. Uh, because it's different from all the other decks that I have. And I think that the decks that I just picked are definitely different enough from each other to warrant being in my collection. So then if I had to grab only one more deck right now to like definitely save, it would be, and I, there are a ton of decks on top of it, my Sacred Destiny Oracle. I've talked about this a bunch lately. Um, I haven't even had it for a year. I saw a lot of people obsessed with it and I didn't really see the hype. I didn't really love the images of it. But now that I have it, I love it and I need it. My collection, Roshi. I don't know what she is doing. Okay, so now that I've had these decks picked out, those are 16 decks that are like my absolute must-haves. I feel like that is already a lot, but it's okay. It's okay. I know some decks that I can let go of. So that is where we're going to get started now. The first one, unfortunately, is my Story Oracle. This was a deck that I was super intrigued by. And I do think it is fun. Like, if I didn't like it, I wouldn't have gotten it. I wouldn't have worked with it. But I just, it is a deck that, it says it's a creative writing inspiration deck. So it has prompts, like story prompts for creative writing on it, but you can also use it as an Oracle deck. However, I have tried using it as an Oracle deck and sometimes you get really spot on messages. And then sometimes I'm like, this does not make sense for an Oracle message. This really is like a creative writing deck. And that is just not something that I am really looking for. I thought that that would be like super fun, but I can use literally like a tarot deck or any other Oracle deck for that as well. Okay. What is next on the chopping block? Uh, this is so hard. Okay, I have two Oracle decks here. First is the Star Codes Astro Oracle. I have not been using this. I picked this as a seasonal deck, I think, for... Or I wanted to pick it as a seasonal deck. But then I didn't because I wanted to work with other decks more. And that is sort of the idea. Like, do I want to take time away from other like for my favorite decks to work with this one, I don't. This is really hard because I think this is an amazing deck. I think it's really, really cool. I still have to read all of the uh, all of the stories in it. This is the Deep, Dark and Dangerous Oracle. 
and it's really really cool it has all these stories of like deep dark dangerous creatures and beings and i think that's super interesting and i i because i haven't really read with i haven't really read the guidebook all the way through because it's kind of hard to read because it has a very prominent background and it's very hard to read very hard to focus on for me um, but I got this as a gift from a subscriber. So I find it really hard to let go of gifts from other people. You know, it's, it's something that I really, really struggle with because I don't want to seem not grateful because I am incredibly grateful that I got this. But I also find it a little hard because I'm not really using it. Uh, I think I'm going to keep it for now. I don't really know like what I want to do with this ultimately because I do want to read the stories and that is why uh, first of all I'm keeping it so I'm keeping it for now then next on the chopping block is my Valoria's Tarot this is really really uh, really 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 cute it is a uh, sort of a minimal deck very limited color use it is small and it is adorable I have not reached for this. I have not really done any meaningful readings with this. <laughs> At least not that I can remember. So I think this is also one that I need to let go of. I think this is really cute, but I just don't use it. And I'm sort of over feeling emotionally attached to things. I said, well, after I just talked about this deck, but it's just, it's hard, you know? Oh, I do love my Tarot of Trees. I do talk about this a lot. I really, really like my Tarot of Trees. I'm going to keep that. And then I only have two Lenormand decks. Both of those I will be keeping um, because I only have two of them. And this one, my Dreaming Way Lenormand, I wrote the keywords on. And this one, my... What is it called? Oh, Green Glyphs Lenormand. It doesn't have keywords on it. So I want to have both. But a deck that I have talked about letting go of potentially a lot. And I think I'm finally ready to let go of it is my Tarot. And I struggle with this a lot. I did etch um, the sides blue. Uh, but it's so adorable. It has a little rat as the main character. And he's adorable. And that is what makes it so hard for me to let go of. Because I feel like I have an emotional attachment to the rat. Even though he's he's on only on pictures but it is adorable i have i i only touch this deck to show it in videos not even reading with it in videos just showing it for like tags or the clutter or collection videos it has to go i think another deck that has to go is the everyday witch tarot I grabbed it out of my purgatory drawer to work with it again and I did it <laughs> and it's so hard again because this is actually the deck that I chose when I was on the Sapa Pezza's Say Yes to the Deck um, which really made me feel like I was more connected with the tarot community online it was really fun to meet Lisa so I do feel somewhat of an emotional connection to this deck it's also just cute I etched the sides yellow which I think looks really really great and it's like a super fun witchy deck but it's not really the type of witch that I am I don't even see myself as a witch to be completely honest um and yeah I think it's cute but I don't use it and I think I need to let go of it a deck that I've been struggling with a lot as well uh, is my Magical Dogs Tarot. Because I love dogs and I love the dogs in this deck, but I don't read with this. And that makes me really sad. I do think that the guidebook that comes with this deck is amazing and it really helped me a lot in my tarot journey. So again, I feel that emotional connection with it because it is dogs and... I love dogs like you can hear mine like throughout this entire fucking video because she just keeps playing she has this like super hard like bone thing this one it's disgusting it apparently smells like beef so she loves this thing 
and she just throws it around everywhere. You want to go? <laughs> so I love dogs and you know my love for dogs is now tied to owning a dog tarot deck. There is also a new dog tarot deck coming out that I was interested in. I was like, but I already have a dog tarot deck and I don't even use that one. So I think that I'm ready to let go of this. Oof. I don't know if I'm gonna regret all of this. I don't think so because I have some decks that I am really, really in love with. Okay, but we're like not even close to finished. There's another deck that I have been doubting. And it's the Finding Inner Peace Inspiration cards. There are definitely some cards in here that are super great, but I don't really use it. Um, I love this deck. Um, being loud and powerful, I am maintaining my standards and ideals and I'm proudly loud and powerful about them. Pretty sure this is like one of the cards of the year that I pulled. I'm not, I don't really rem quite remember, but this is a fun deck. I just don't really use it. I don't think it has a really a need in my collection. I don't really do affirmation decks. I have tried a lot of different types of affirm affirmation, mantra types of decks, and they just do not work for me. So I think I'm gonna let go of that one. I think that would be a really good one to uh, have in the giveaway. So definitely stay tuned for that. Okay, this one I want to keep. This is the Millennial Tarot and I have been using this. I have had some really profound, fun, good readings with this. I did an entire review of this. This was sent to me by the creators and it is just so fun. If I need not just like a pick-me-up, but I really need to feel good and I want to want to have like a fun reading, that is a great deck because the titles on the cards are so funny and I just really relate to the concept of the deck. They are trying to, I think they're creating a Gen Z tarot deck similar to the Millennial Tarot, so definitely keep your eyes out for that. Then I have this one, the Shadow and Light Oracle. It's really pretty, I think it's really cool. Uh, and I've talked about this a couple of times before where there are like dualities on the card. So this has self-doubt and hope. And I think it is really reflect, it, it's, it's a really great deck for reflection to see where your energy is going. Um, we have reflection, overthinking. It's like reflection is a good thing, but be careful that it doesn't um, go into overthinking. We have behavior and interpretation. Is it something that uh, like a behavior that someone is showing can be interpreted in many different ways? I don't know. I just, I think this is a really interesting deck. I am definitely not ready to let go of this because I think that it still has some things to show me and to teach me. Then I cannot sell this. <laughs> this is my dark mirror oracle because I have keywords written on it. I haven't really reached for it much because if I want to work with an oracle deck I have plenty of amazing decks. I have my sacred destiny, I have my tree keepers, I have my Beltane or my season of the witch um, oracles. So this is not really an oracle that I gravitate towards. It is very different from other decks that I have in my collection. It's very much like a shadow work type deck and I have written down keywords on them. I think this is one that I'm going to put with my Deep Dark and Dangerous Oracle to really think about what I want to do with them. Oh, I also have the Unfolding Path Tarot. This one I, I'm gonna keep because I got this over the summer and I've worked with it a ton then. Forgot that I had tea. <laughs> Perfect drinking temperature. And I love the artwork. I love the diversity. I love the different interpretations of the cards. I love that. I think it's the Page of Cups is an old man. So I really like that as well. So yeah, this is definitely one that I'm not finished with yet. So I'm gonna keep the Unfolding Path Tarot. Then I have the Little Wizards Tarot. I am a big Harry Potter fan. I love Harry Potter but I don't want something to like from, I don't want to support anything from the original like Harry Potter franchise because that puts money into the pocket of a turf and I don't want that. 
So this is by an indie creator and it is adorable. Okay. <laughs> It is adorable and not too long ago i think it was about around christmas time a little bit before it we did an entire rewatch of the films and it is just so fun i love 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 harry potter do i often read with this deck no no but this is pure pleasure um i do have an emotional connection to this not even to this deck I have an emotional connection to Harry Potter. Okay, my shelves are slowly emptying. Okay, then I have this one. I don't see you, are you okay? Uh, I think she dropped it under the couch. So now she's trying to crawl under the couch with her little T-Rex arms because she's a dog soon and she has very small short paws. The unknown uh, pocket tarot. I go back and forth on this one because I do get good readings with it, but I rarely ever reach for it. <laughs> I rarely ever reach for it. You guys know what this looks like. You guys know what the wild unknown looks like. Um, this is one that I'm going to think about also because I got this from a viewer. So um, I feel not great about letting go of those. Now, Roshi! Okay, apparently her ball was also under there, so... Okay, then I have the White Newman Tarot. And this one is interesting because I do like it. I think, most of all, I think it's really pretty. And I know that's superficial. I don't really care that it's superficial. I just think it's pretty. Look at it, it's pretty. And I love the colors. <sighs> But do I want to grab this deck over another deck of mine? And I don't think that I do. Like, uh, um, with another deck of mine, I mean, any one that I have here. No, I would rather grab the Fifth Spirit Tarot, the Cesare Bido Tarot, my Lightseer's Tarot. Those decks I would rather grab than this one. So I think I'm ready to let this one go as well. Then I have one more that is really, really hard. I'm already getting goosebumps because this is hard. This is my Terror of the Divine. And I was starting to do a Drop Em 78 challenge. I have the book, like the big book that come, that doesn't come with it, but that's made to be with it um, as well. Every card uh, shows a story and it's fun, like a story, like a fairy tale, folklore, myth, I don't use this. I don't read this. I don't love the shuffle on this deck. I don't love... I don't love working with this deck. It looks fun and bright and colorful, but I don't work with it. So this is another deck that I think I really need to let go of. Like, damn, am I doing this good? Almost giving me a little bit of anxiety that I'm saying I'm gonna get rid of so many decks. I still have a ton. I still have plenty. Okay, so now time for some oracle decks. The Citadel Oracle is one that I do think is really, really great. I have been on an oracle kick lately. I've purchasing, I feel like I've been purchasing more oracle decks than tarot decks. Um, but I have found some oracle decks that I just really, really vibe with. And I think this is stunning, you guys. This is stunning. Um, I think this is one that I am going to put away. I'm definitely not selling or giving it away yet uh, because it comes into, in, in like an entire special edition box and I'm not ready to part with that. Um, because I do think this is really great. I have gotten some really great messages from it and I definitely recommend it. I don't think the sides, like the, the shape is that that hard to work with because you do have the sides which makes it easier or easy to shuffle. I love the color schemes, I love the holographic details. I just would rather reach for other Oracle decks that I have and it's it really is that simple. I don't know, I think I've been really influenced and really horrified maybe by hoarders that I feel like I need to get rid of so many decks. I don't know, it's hard, it's hard. Okay, this is a deck, the spread deck that I got from the creator, Holly Nelson. 
And I was really thankful. This was one of the first, no, this was the first deck that got sent to me for review. And I do think it's fun, but I haven't really been using it. Uh, it shows like spread positions on every card. And I think it is really, really great. Um, and I think it's really fun. I think because I, I don't want to sell decks that I got sent for free for review because I feel like that, I don't know, that feels a little icky or something. So I think this is one that I'm going to give away so one of you guys can enjoy it. Ooh, okay, two more Oracle decks to go. Okay, three more Oracle decks to go over and three more Tarot decks. You guys know my love for the Prism Oracle. I love this deck. I have gotten this from a viewer and it is so fun. It has like bold color, so I feel like it goes with a lot of decks um, to pair with it. And it is just a very fast, quick reader. So yeah, the Prism Oracle is definitely a keeper. Then I have the Journey Oracle. I don't think I need to show this because I talk about this all the time. Also a keeper. And then the last Oracle deck that I want to talk about is the Believe in Your Own Magic Oracle deck. I do think this is a really fun deck. I have gotten a lot of use out of this deck. I've used it for client readings. I've used it for um, like readings on this channel. And it's great. It's really fun. But I think that my time with it is done. I don't know. I just sort of feel that way. I feel like um, this is another deck that I want to give away because I think it really aligns with my message here on this channel. So I want to give it to one of you guys. So those were the Oracle decks. Now I have three more tarot decks to go through. Okay. Uh not ready for this one yet, but I am ready for this one. The Pulp Girls Tarot. This is great. I follow the Pulp Girls Tarot or the Pulp Girls whatever on Instagram. They have a really fun aesthetic Instagram account. They come out with all of these fun graphics and this is amazing. I always say I love the fashion. I love the outfits that they wear. I wish I could wear them myself. Um, yeah, this is great. It looks great. It is an RWS clone. Am I gonna grab this one over my Centennial RWS? No, I'm not gonna pick it over any of the other decks that I already have here for keeps. So this one can go. Okay, these two are really, really, really hard. The last two are the Tattoo Tarot and the Ethereal Visions Luna Tarot. So I do, I have not been using the Ethereal Visions Tarot that much, um, but I got it last year, I think, and I really, really, really loved it. I don't think that I'm ready to let go of this one because I do think it's really pretty. I do think that there's still some time for me with this deck. I don't know, don't really have words with it, but I, I'm just kind of feeling that. But I do think I can let go of the Tattoo Tarot, which is really hard because this was one of my first favorite decks. Oh, hey, Rosie. You want me to throw your ball or not? Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> she doesn't. This is my only, pretty much only Marseille-inspired deck. Um, again, this is one of my first favorite decks. I have used this for client readings, for political readings, for personal readings. Um, and it is a really, really great reader. But I have not been reaching for it for a long time. Again, I would rather grab one of the other decks here uh, to work with instead. So also I'm letting go of the Tattoo Tarot. Oh, one deck that is also in my collection. I recently got this sent for review. I still have to work with it. It's the Oracle of the Mythic Heroes. So I'm also, uh, I also have that in my collection, um, but I still have to work with it for review. Um, I'm also going to grab some of the decks that are in my, or I'm also going to grab the decks that are in my purgatory drawer. So you can really get a sense of what I'm letting go of. Oh, this. <laughs> This is a lot. 
Okay, I don't know what to do with it. Okay, I'm just gonna show you. I'm gonna find a place on my already crowded, pretty much full desk to put it. This, I can show you, has my tea leaf oracle cards, sort of. I haven't been using these. These are round ones. I do have the box somewhere, so um, I'm gonna be letting that go. Then I have the Sun and Moon Tarot in a tin. I do have my Light Sears Tarot in a tin in my bag um, that I carry around with me. Um, and this one is super cute. It's a Thoth inspired. I don't read Thoth, uh, so I have been using it as an RWS deck. But I just, I don't grab this. I don't really grab for a lot of tin decks. Then I have my Making Magic little cards, which I think uh, I wanted to get for like spells. Rosie? Uh, for like spells and stuff. Have not been using it at all. Some of these I totally forgot that I had in there. So I think that's a good sign that I am ready to let go of them. Where my soul whispered, it's cute. It's minimalistic. It's pretty. I do not use this. Um, it is a like a mini oracle deck sort of, um, but I just, I don't know, I've not been reaching for it. Then I have my Tarot of the Little Prince. I had a little like idea that I wanted to read the story and then know if I wanted to get the Tarot deck, but I feel like I really wanted to like the story so that I could get myself another Tarot deck. And it's cute, it's fun. Uh, I love the theme of the story of the little prince, but I don't need the deck. I don't need the deck. Then I have my Dream Decoder. I got this from a friend. This one has cards to like interpret your dreams. Have not used that. It's also very horrible quality. Then I am letting go of the Sacred Self Care Oracle. I had used this so much when I first got it. I am pretty sure I use it for like over a year consistently for client readings, for readings on this channel, for pick a card readings that I did uh, because I love self-care and I promote self-care. But over time, you, uh, there are only so many decks or so many cards in this deck and I kept pulling the same ones and I felt like, okay, it's really getting repetitive. So I feel like I can let go of it. Then I have my Therapets. I also think that I'm gonna do, like enter this in the giveaway or put this in a giveaway. Um, I love this deck. It is so fun, but I cannot shuffle it because the cards are way too big. Um, but I definitely know that one of you can, um, will really have a great time with it. Um, another one is a packaged up Tree Keepers Oracle. This will go into the giveaway as well. Um, I had purchased the Tree Keepers Oracle, this one, um, in September, I think. And it was supposed to get here at the beginning of November. And then at the end of November, it was still not here. Beginning of December, it was still not here. So I got a refund. And then I got this one at the end of January because it was just lost in postage, I guess. Um, so I now, now I have an, I have an extra and I want to give it away to you guys. Another one that it was kind of hard to make a decision on was my Wake Me Up Tarot because this is an indie deck. I really, really like this. Um, it, I felt for a while that this was like my modern deck. Um, I felt like this was my, this my Heart Tarot, which is a deck that a lot of people love. But now that I have that one and I love that one, I don't really feel a need for this deck. I do think it's great, um, but I don't really feel the need to have it. Then I'm also getting rid of my Witchling Academy Tarot. I'm just not really into tarot decks with like a whole story. Um, like really contextual, I guess, tarot decks. It's just not really my thing. I th think it really distracts from reading with the tarot in a tarot way, you know? Um, so I think this is super cute. I love like a good manga type of deck, um, but I just haven't been reading with it. Then the Orion's Animal Tarot. Uh, the cards are just really dark. Um, I don't really like tarot, uh, animal tarot decks. So, mm, I don't know, I've talked about this before, so you're probably not surprised if you've watched me before that I am letting go of this one. I just have not been using it. And then another that was really, really, really hard, but will probably not surprise some of you. 
is the Mermaid Tarot. I had talked about this before, uh, that I was con contemplating um, getting rid of it. And then you guys told me to read the guidebook. I did. <laughs> and it was really good but just i have not been using this deck and i got this deck because of bahali life and it is really great and i think this is the one like the hardest one because and we're starting with uh, a wands card right on top and i think the wands suit is my favorite here even though it's like a mermaid ocean theme deck the fire suit in this is amazing and i think it is a really great deck but i think it can be enjoyed by someone else who hopefully will use it more than i have been using it so those are all the decks that i am letting go of i am going to count the decks that i'm keeping and then the decks that i'm letting go of i have 26 that i'm definitely keeping then the three that i'm gonna think about 27 decks that i'm decluttering that's like half my collection, you guys. The fuck? I'm overwhelmed. And there are definitely some great decks in the pile that I'm letting go of. Absolutely. I wouldn't have gotten them if I didn't like them in the first place. But they just do not have a place in my practice, in my collection, in my life right now. I'm going to get this all cleared up and show you what the shelves are looking like off the daily clutter okay so this hi is what the desk is looking like right now so i have emptied out the plushies because i put them on my shelves until i sell them okay they are all going to be sold i still have to figure out what to do with my crochet hooks and everything uh but this is what it looks like so here i have put some oracle decks that i want to be working with soon then I have my chicken and my frogs here. Some more frogs here. Another chicken. I love these chickens, you guys. And then, oh, sorry. Sorry, guy. Oh, guy. Don't fall. Ah, you're going to fall, huh? Put you here. And then here I have the tarot decks that I want to be working with. Excuse you. Look at that face. Yeah, yo. Okay. And then here are just plushies. I have mushrooms, I have coffee cups, I have um, octopi, more mushrooms, and some more frogs. And then here I have the decks that I definitely want to keep but I'm not really working with right now. These has some meditation balls. Um, I love this little guy. And here I have the Prism Oracle and my Season of the Witch Oracles. I have a little, two little llamas here and then more oracle and then some tarot and the norman decks and the ones that i have in a pouch um, and my little norman deck over there and then some more tarot behind here that i'm not currently working with because i want to focus on those and then i have my crystals i have i think there's an opalite amethyst carnelian fluorite oh and i too also have um these two decks here that i want to be working with I feel like I did a lot today. I feel like I did a lot. <laughs> and I am proud of myself. I do like my shelves. There are kind of a lot of plushies on them, but I think it's cute. I'm going to sell those. So yeah, let me show you all the decks that I got rid of, you guys. The fuck? These are so many decks. Half my collection, almost. Almost. So... Yeah, I'm going to sell those or put them in a giveaway. And I'll soon put up when the live stream is going to be happening, where I'm going to do the giveaway. So if you want to see that, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for being here. Click the video on the screen if you want to watch another video of mine. And I hope to see you next time. Bye!